All right, are we live? Let's go. I don't know if anybody's here listening, but uh, welcome everybody. This is awesome. And I am here with the rock star of the show, Becky Foss. Thank you for sitting down. <laughs> I'm trying to get you out of here. I know you've been taking pictures all day, but thank you for your time. I know the community thanks you as well because I think you're from down here, right? Um, originally from Texas, but okay. I've spent the last 22 years here in New Orleans and I'm not going anywhere. I love it. And uh, I know you have some studios in New Orleans, right? So yep. if people didn't get a chance to see you today and take their picture, they can come to your studios in New Orleans. Why don't you talk about where those are located in the city? Okay, so my main gallery is on Magazine at Jackson I Street. And I've been there for about eight years now. And um, I don't see myself leaving. I love it. <laughs> What's your favorite thing to paint? Oh gosh, that's tough because I, I I love I love painting everything, but I think one of my favorite subject matters would probably be the pelican. The pelican, let's yes. go. The one love right the behind pelican. you, like that version of it. Yes. Or, yes, let's go. Yep. Is that your call? Would you say that's your calling card? I think so. The pelican, and also people know me for my oysters as well. Yeah, we have a few of those in our shop as well. Um, <laughs> little shameless plug: I have a collectible shop in Baton Rouge in Perkins Row. And Becky's art is all over the place. It's one of the top selling art. We do all the wow. frames. Trey hooked us up with all your, uh, all your stuff. Some of them are signed and everything. So people love it. Uh, you're a top seller, especially around Christmas time. Everybody loves buying stuff wow. for their house and everything. That, yeah. that it, that's the biggest compliment that, you know, people would choose my art over. It, the state is completely saturated with wonderful art and t very talented artists. So when they choose me, it, it's a huge compliment for me. Absolutely. And, uh, since we are from Baton Rouge, I know you just did something really cool with Kim Mulkey, right? So yes. former, uh, <laughs> she's a national champion. And talk to me about that experience and oh what that's gosh. been like. Okay, that, we're not supposed to be crying right now, oh. but. <laughs> no tears, it's okay. That was, that was such a magical experience. And just putting myself back in that place and that moment in time, meeting with Kim and getting to sit right next to her and seeing all of our fans. And I mean, I would say mainly her fans because she's such a rock star no. and just, um, she, she's amazing and humble and just super, just a, a huge inspiration to me and everybody else as well. And she's just so down to earth that I love everything about her. <laughs> I, I love that. Well, you seem extremely humble as well because people come into my shop and when you were doing your autograph signing and I told them that you were doing it and they missed it, they freaked out. Like people were <laughs> mad. It was hilarious. And I'm like, it's okay. I'm sure she's going to do other ones. You guys can follow her on social media and get it and everything. So I know people were there to see you as well. well so. that, yes, I, I'm definitely feeling the love right now. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I promise I'll let you get out of here in a couple of minutes, but maybe can you lean into any little projects that you're working on, anything upcoming that people can look forward to right now that you can talk about? Well, um, I this will be the third year that I launch my annual doubloon during Mardi Gras season. Yes. So I've done that for, this will be the third year, like I said and um, already working on next year's design. And if you do love the tiger subject matter, uh, that could possibly be a little insight to what I love it. this year's doubloon will look like. All right, very <laughs> cool. Well, I know this wasn't part of your uh, your deal here, so I promise I'll let you get <laughs> no, out of here. No, it's okay. Um, it, it, thank you. Thank, thank yeah. you for having me. This 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 is great. Yeah, I would love to do a full session like podcast in, in our shop someday. Maybe we can do an autograph signing or meet and greet of and course, that kind of stuff. I, I would love that. And anytime I can connect with people and, and especially my fans in the community, I, I love it. It like the, the signings that I'm doing right now, um, sponsored by Coke and for the, to commemorate the yeah. ladies basketball championship yep. game with the, with the ugh, tiger artwork. <laughs> I, I get to meet everybody. And it, it's so funny because it's like, it's like a mini speed dating yeah. and I have all these people and I love to spend time with everybody I and yeah. I would just wish there were more hours in the day. Yeah. Your <laughs> badass husband was telling me that, uh, that Floge was loving oh your art, gosh. right? Yes. Talk yes. What, that's gotta I, I be can, so cool, huh? Oh my gosh. That she is amazing. She's, awesome. she's beautiful. She's kind. Rock she's star. just so humble. And I mean, I wish I was a classmate <laughs> that got to sit right next to her and just right. an ordinary class <laughs> yeah that's got to be just humbling though right when somebody that you see like that yeah wants your art and and compliments you and stuff yes. like that too right so amazing yeah. just simply amazing well if those doors are opening for you i'm really excited to follow your journey you know and like i said i would love to have you on the purple couch in uh cards and culture for a full podcast but why don't you get out of here and uh, go enjoy the rest of okay. your day but well, thank you again the community thanks you this is huge uh, and thank you for the time. That's obviously the most valuable thing that oh, we all have. So thank, thank you. Becky. Thank you so much for having me. And it, it, it was it was a pleasure. Absolutely. <laughs>
I think we're live. Let's do it. Oh, Jacob. Let's go. Yeah. Thank you, dude, for being here. Uh, shout out to all the Tiger fans. I see everybody here for Tommy and Hayden. Let's celebrate some Tigers. We got Tiger football coming up. So um, first of all, I want to shout out your show. You guys do a show every day. Maybe yep. tell everybody wh where that is, where they can find that, and what yeah. you do every day. Uh, a lot of LSU baseball fans here today love yeah. seeing that. And of course, we all love our LSU baseball. But football season is coming up. But yeah, we do Off the Bench, me and T-Bob Hebert love it. every morning, 7 to 10 a.m. You can hear it throughout Louisiana, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Alexandria, up in the Port City, 3-1 great. <laughs> uh, also, Sirius XM, I do off campus, 2 to 5. Let's go. Every single day on College Sports Radio, Channel 84 there. And I do that from my house, man. It's from gonna, the house? Yeah, I do it from the house. I got love a studio it. there. So I've got five kiddos. So yeah, anything I can do from the house helps out a little bit. <laughs> That's awesome. How do you balance that? Five kids, you're, um, you know, obviously doing stuff in radio, media, traveling, yeah. that kind of stuff. How do you balance uh, that? I've got the greatest wife of all time. That's it. <laughs> because if I didn't, I mean, look, it is like divide and conquer. That's right. At this point, you know, yeah. today earlier, I had my oldest son. He had a football scrimmage uh, there at a birthday party in Pensacola. So we're like going all over the place a little bit here. But uh, I could not do it without her. So. I'm married up. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Everybody needs a good partner, right? That's how yes. behind the scenes, all that. Um, but if you guys aren't aware, Jacob is a national champion uh, for our LSU football team in 07, right? Yeah, 07. 07. That was my freshman year. What year were you I don't senior? think you need to say that part of it. <laughs> That's all right. We're not that far apart. We were on campus together. <laughs> yes. You were a senior? Uh, yeah, I was a senior in 07. That's yeah. awesome. I was the old man on the team, though. I was already married in, in the whole bit, yeah. You were married in yeah, college? Yeah, I got married right before that season. Yeah. I love that. It was kind of cool, though, because that entire season I got to share with my wife in bowl trip. When you're married in college, they get to go to the bowl trip as well. Damn. And that was awesome. a natty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was kind of yeah. cool, yeah. You guys played Ohio State that year, right? We did. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. And I do radio with Bobby Carpenter, who was like an Ohio State legend. He's basically like the mayor of Columbus still. And I still talk trash about that game. So wow, yeah, that's that's it's awesome. It's good you get to be a, a big brand like that. Yeah, you know, I love that <laughs> big brand. Yeah, um, number eighteen. That was was that your number all throughout college? Because yeah. I know that that's now a tradition, right? So yeah, they just named uh, right the number seven, yeah. number eighteen. Talk to me what that's like for you and what that means. Oh, it means everything to me. I mean, it's like the ultimate honor for me and my family. Like. The national championship obviously is going to always be the highest pecking order, but like an individual deal more than like all SEC or any of the all American stuff, like being a part of that tradition because a national championship quarterback, Matt Mock chose me to wear that number. I'm yeah. like, I I'm some like squirrely freshman. Like, yeah. I don't know what he saw in me, but I'm glad that he did. And then now being a part of that, man, it's a fraternity and we have like a group chat. Like today, Makai yeah. Wingo gets named number 18, and one of the greatest joys is like adding him to yes. the group chat. Hey, fellas, welcome Makai to the group, and we keep in touch. I mean, Falls Tamora, who was just going through something incredibly serious. Yep. Like when he's going through that, it's kind of cool to see it play out on the chat. Like anything we can do for you, let us know. And of course, Foster's like the ultimate competitor. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm going to beat it. Like it's fine. <laughs> like I'll do it. But just to be a part of that, it really means like everything to not only me, but my family as well. I mean, you see, we got. The 18 logo is for yeah. my foundation. And so, uh, you know, using the other 18s to kind of give back to the community as well. No, it's it's something that is absolutely amazing. I think you've laid a great groundwork, too. You know, even on the baseball side, Mikey Matzik started yeah. that tradition shortly after that. Um, and that's something really cool that I know LSU baseball fans love and something that's just really cool from an alumni perspective, too. Like you said, it is a fraternity yeah. and it's really cool to see guys aspire to have that number, that kind of stuff, too. So, yeah, and look, it's not always going to go to necessarily the best player. Right. Like, that's not what it means. Right. It means somebody that is the ultimate Tiger on and off the field and one cool thing and by the way Makai's an all-american so it can go to a really good player as yeah, well yeah yeah but one of the cool things when benny logan who wore 18 was getting drafted the eagles came in and they were talking with jack marucci who yeah. you know you talk to the training guys kind of get an idea of who a guy is off the field and they were they got to the character portion they're like oh well he wore a team we'll have to even talk about that and Damn. like to me to hear a story like that yeah. is pretty cool because that means they trust you in any situation on and off the field. So kind of no, cool. Dude, that's really cool. Yeah. That is really cool. Um, so it's football season's upon us. Kim Mulkey did her thing. Uh, Jay Johnson did his thing. How about Brian Jay? Oh, my God. I mean, we, he's the best. I mean, Mulkey's the GOAT. Jay's soon to be one of them. I mean, yep. the work ethic that Jay Johnson has is incredible. He, ne he never turns it off. I'll Ever. tell you a story about him. During the lockout, I'm working out, and I was with the Chargers, we're working out at USD uh -huh. on their campus. Yeah. And it's 2011, I think was that year. And I see this assistant coach for San Diego grinding. 
in the weight room all oh the time with like these three players. And I'm like, all right, who is this guy? He's yeah. always in here. The head coach wasn't in there that much. And I introduced myself and it was Jay Johnson. Dude, I love that. Yeah. And so when he became available, I'm like, Scott, go, go. you got to go find a way go. to get this guy. So he's always been that guy. I love that. I mean, they said his first day, he got off the plane. He worked till like 4 a.m. He was calling yep. people, talking to all the players and everything, he, dude, getting he, his guys in there. I mean, I, I've seen it at a very high level, but I don't know if I've ever seen anybody like him. Dude, so. it's, it is. And now, all the pressure, like you're about to say, I, I know. on BK, you're number two. Yeah, that's, that. That's. I mean, LSU fans love that. They're going to run yeah. with that and everything. But yeah, no, Jay Johnson, he's building a dynasty. I can't yeah. wait to see what they're doing this year. But yeah, BK's got some pressure on him. He the does. team, it, team it, looks good, though. Looking in last year. The win total was six and a half. I know. And you go out there, you smash that. Yep. You get to Atlanta. Now it didn't go your way, but you look, you still played pretty well, certainly offensively, yep. like to kind of give you an idea of what it's going to take to get back to that point. And so now that's the expectation. You I mean, you know, same thing with LSU baseball. You go and have a year like that. Well, you better go win one exactly. the next year. But the best part about it is he embraces all of that. Yeah. Like he wants to play the best teams. He doesn't want LSU Alabama or LSU Florida to ever go away. Yep. And he talks about that's why I'm here. I'm not here to play directional school U. I'm here to play in those games. And so, I mean, we're going to find out yeah. in a couple of weeks. Yeah. I mean, they're, I mean, they're playing a real deal Holyfield Florida State National Championship type yep. team. And he embraces those kind of games, which I think you have to at a place like LSU. Absolutely. Yeah. So give us a hot take. I'll let you get out of here. I know you want to go uh, walk around with Jackson a little bit, but give us a hot take. What do you think? How How's the team looking? Little prediction? I think they thoughts? get back to Atlanta. Love it. Yeah. They they beat Tus uh, Alabama in Tuscaloosa. They get back to Atlanta. Now that's a challenge. Are they 8-0 till Alabama? I think so, man. Okay, I, I really it. do. I mean, I think that's that this kind of year for LSU. Yeah. Uh, and you have to make sure that you stay focused in the games that aren't Alabama – that Correct. aren't the big ones, Correct. right? Yep. You can't have A&M like you did a year ago, yes. right? Yep. Even Arkansas game, you won, but you can't have a game like that. That's how you go from a great team to a championship team. And so I'm looking for them to make that next step. And I think they get back to Atlanta. And then once you get to that point, now you got to find a way to slay the giant. Exactly. The standard. I mean, yep. they are. Georgia right 100%. now what they've done back-to-back. -back. And so yep. I like LSU to get to that point, and then we'll see what happens once they get there. But – uh High, high expectations high, for the Tigers, man. High. Nine yeah. and a half win total is a lot different than six and a half last year, right? <laughs> I mean, over under. It's a big that's, jump. That's a big jump. It's a big yeah. jump. But I, I, I would, uh, yeah, I would definitely lay that bet. I love over it. nine and a half for sure. I love it. Three names. Who are some three? I know there's some popular names. Give me some names that you're looking out for that you're excited to take that next step this year. Will Campbell is the best left tackle in college football. I, I just, he is. Nice. I've, nice. I've seen too many times him in practice go against guys, even like, you know, Harold Perkins, and yeah. still be successful. I think Will Campbell is about to really burst onto the scene. Not that he wasn't already, right. but he's a true freshman. Exactly, yeah. I mean, he was a true freshman starting left tackle in the yeah. SEC. He's won. The guy that just got number 18, Makai Wingo. Yep. He's an All-American. I mean, I know Mason gets a lot of the you know the credit. He should. I mean, right, Mason right. is an absolute stud. Makai was an All-American. He graded out the highest as any defensive tackle in the country last year. Played 30 more snaps than any defensive tackle in the country. So he was out there. He was out there, yeah. A ton. So I'm looking forward it. to seeing what he does. And then you got to have a guy in the secondary step up. And it's got to be Major Burns leading the charge from the safety position. He was hurt last year. When yep. he was in there, it was a different secondary last year. So they've got to have him stay healthy. He's got to be a leader back there because it's really the one position group, safety and corner, that you probably got the biggest questions. Love it. I mean, that's some expert. I almost cursed right there. I'm trying to keep it PG. I usually curse <laughs> on my podcast, but there's a lot of kids here. So uh, good stuff, Jacob. Thank you, man. Yeah. Go enjoy the rest of the uh, the show. We all thank you, you know, from the Collectibles community, everybody yeah. here that's a Tiger fan. Thank you for the time. That's obviously the most valuable asset, especially you said you have huge family. So we all appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. And we'll be looking forward to watching the show and football season this year. I appreciate it. Uh, there's two Charger fans in Louisiana. They're both here today, me and my son. So we're about to go see if we can find anything Charger in the building right now. You guys heard that. Anybody has any Charger <laughs> stuff, be ready. Jacob's coming around looking. That's right. That's right. Appreciate it, brother. Yep. Oh, we'll have an audience? <laughs> Some people like to come gather. Okay. Ready yes, for let's it. go. We are here on the purple couch, and uh, I'm with Brielle Viator, right? Yes, That's yes, how we say it. That and is uh, it. you are the rock star that put this show on, right? I think. I guess I am. Yeah. You I'll heard that, Trey? That. I'll take that, Trey. I'm Trey's, the rock Trey's star. Trey's replaced. <laughs> um, but seriously, you do the marketing and the branding, right? And yes. so you guys have been working on this. This has been an incredible event. 
I own a collectible shop in Baton Rouge, and these kinds of events are absolutely amazing for the community. So absolutely. first and foremost, thank you. Of this course, is awesome. happy but to be here. Yeah, yeah talk Love a little it. bit about this event, how it came together, and some of the things that you did for it. Uh, so this event came together, I guess Trey mentioned it to me probably about six months ago or so, if I'm right about that, a while ago. And then we started talking about the logo and what he wants it to portray. And um, yeah, we put it together and it was honestly kind of quick. It was like a first time we were like, well, that's it, we love it. Yeah. Like that's, that's what it's gonna be. And then after that kind of came together, we did all the other marketing things, you know, to get in the banners and all the signage and pulled the bones together, made the foundation and now we're here, so. Very cool. Are yeah. you a graphic designer by trade? I am, yes. Love it. Yes. So you actually did the design of the logo for the Bayou Collectibles, I did, right? all yes. That stuff. The one Very that's cool. hanging up there, that is my it. design, yeah. Okay, and yes. do you work for a marketing firm? Are you individual? Like, what? talk to me a little um, bit about what you do. So I actually, I own my own company. It's called The Social Sense. Okay. Um, and I do social media marketing, branding, logo, web development, web design. Um, all the all those good digital marketing things. Oh so, my God! What's yeah. it, so what's it called? The Social Sense. I love it. Where can people find you if they want if they're interested in anything? Um, my Instagram handle is this at the social dot sense, and then my website is the social sense dot net. Absolutely, so, I love it. Um, yes. How did you meet Trey? How did all this come about? Was it something that you pursued for him, or did he seek you out? He. <laughs> You're fired already, Trey. We already decided. Yeah, I'm running the show now, Trey. <laughs> um, we actually met, so we lived in the same apartment complex years ago. We go nice. way back. So Very cool. um, that's kind of how we connected. And yeah, this kind of worked that way. I love nice. it. So hopefully there's a next year and hopefully you're doing it. Are there any going to be any new designs, any new elements that we're hey, adding to maybe it? Maybe so. That'd be cool. We should. We I, should do that. Bring something new every year. A little, little something. I love it. Yes. Um, what was the most rewarding thing that you saw when you got in here? Oh man, I think driving up and seeing the sign and everything together and walking in and seeing everyone in all these booths is so amazing. He's done such a good job putting everything together. Um, it's a really, I think he's outdone himself. 15 out of 10, Trey. I'm in. Wow, you heard that? <laughs> on record, on camera. No, this, this event really has been really, really special. Uh, you know, the uniqueness of it, I go to a lot of these shows and stuff like that, so to see different tables, different brands bringing themselves here, yeah. it was really cool, so. Super special, yeah. community, it's Yeah. Community. Thank you so much for doing everything that you did. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to next year, hopefully. Absolutely, um, me and, too. I, and I'll definitely give you a follow, and make sure you say it one more time for everybody where they can find you. Yes, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at The Social Sense, or on Instagram it's the social dot sense, and then my website is thesocialsense.net, so. Love it. Come say hi. <laughs> Thank you, Bree. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. I yes. appreciate it. It's time to head back to the Purple Cow with Anthony, who's sitting down with Angelo Fagan. Tom, what? Thank you for that intro. Hold on. We are here on the Purple Couch. I'm with my guy, Tommy White. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, it's a blast, man. Dude, you're a national champion. Talk to me what that's like. You're on the world tour pretty much right now. I know school's getting back in session, yeah. so you got to lock it in. But talk to me what that's like. I know everybody wants to know. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely different. Um, people know who you are and stuff when you walk around. It's, just, it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. And uh, no better place to do it than LSU, of course. Yeah, and like we were just talking before we threw the cameras on, dude, you came, you transferred from North Carolina State after having an incredible freshman year. You come here, and there's a ton of expectations, and you did everything that we asked you to do and more. Talk to me what that's like and the LSU love and just, like, having that teammates, those brothers, all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, in the beginning, like – I definitely didn't think, like, all the ex expectations everything. I was like, I just want to, you know, just be on the team, like, yeah. play third and everything. Because I know Dylan, Paul, like, all these guys are coming in. Like, I just want to just want to be on the team. Yeah. So uh, to, to be able to contribute the way I did and, and have that, that uh, success is um, no, 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 nothing better, you know? Dude, I want to tell you a funny story. I was in New Jersey, unfortunately, during the championship because my nephew was getting christened. For your walk-off homer, I'm not going to say how much money I had on the game, but I had a lot of money on the game, and you're, I'm, I had the spread, minus one and a half, so that means you guys had to win by two, and you hit a two-run homer in the whatever, bottom of the tent to send us into it. So first of all, thank you, but talk to me what that is like hitting a walk-off homer in Omaha to send you, you know what I'm saying? Just talk to me what that's like. I mean, you can see it. I had no idea how to react. <laughs> I mean, I just, my eyes got wide. I didn't realize yeah. what I did. I started freaking out. Like, I just sprinted around the base. All I want to do is get back to the team. I was just so happy that we all black out. Yeah, man, it was it was crazy. Like I, I didn't know where. Like Alex was trying to hug me and everything. I'm just like, like I can't stop. Like breathing heavy. Yeah. I'm just trying to catch my. I'm like, 
it was nuts. I, I had no idea what was going on. Like the interviews, everything after, like I didn't know what I said. That's why I was like, the lack of feel in the interview, oh. lady, to stick a microphone yeah, in your right face there, right I after. I can't breathe. Yeah, it was like, tough, what are you doing? <laughs> whatever. That's your job. Yeah. Uh, what was that night like after the championship? I'm sure you can't go into details about mm. everything that you guys did, but um, talk to me a little bit about what that was like celebrating with the fans. You know, I know Omaha is a special place because LSU has done some damage there before and even when we won it in 09 they opened up a restaurant for yeah. us you know all that kind of stuff so what was it like after, after yeah it was it was awesome i mean the amount of lsu fans that were at the game it was i think 90 percent lsu fans which yeah. is a little section for florida <laughs> and um yeah we i mean everybody had had a blast afterwards it was, it was cookies and cupcakes everything was awesome Love it. um yeah it was it was a late night and um we all had a blast <laughs> and just to be able to do it with that group of guys and how close we were it was it was very special because like it could have gone two ways and yeah. if if we didn't win at all I, I couldn't imagine what would happen because yeah. that that team will forever come back nonstop to experience like and reminisce the national championship. Yeah, we were joking our '09 team. We were the la fortunately we we're the last team to win it. We were like, dude, guys. We need this team to win it. These are the guys that we want to party with. We want to have reunions <laughs> with. Skeens and crews are going to have a lot of money, so it'll be a lot of fun. You know, hopefully you do the same yeah. thing. But um, in all seriousness, talk what it's like playing with guys like Skeens and crews and being on a team with the number one and number two overall pick. Uh, it's exactly I, – I just watch them. <laughs> I watch exactly what they do, and I try to mimic them because, I mean, if you make $9 million in the draft, you don't want to do exactly yeah. what those guys did. Exactly. So all I do is just all I did was watch Dylan. Everything from his takes to how he was as a person, just how he how he acted, and um, th having those guys as role models have made me a better person. Has changed me as a player, and I feel like with flying colors being upperclassmen now, I feel like I can take that uh, take that yeah. next step, and uh, we can do it again. I love it. I love it. I'll let you get out of here in a couple minutes. Just a couple more questions, but. Yeah, uh, man. The stat of you batting like 600 plus or something with Dylan on first, yeah. what was the mindset? Was it something you just felt comfortable? You knew he was messing with the pitcher a little bit, or I I had no idea that was like the number. <laughs> I didn't know like I didn't know I did that when he was on base. But you gotta think about it. He was on his on base percentage was what like 500. That's true. So yeah. it's like every time I got a hit, he was on base because right. he was always on base. Yeah, good it was point. either a walk or a hit. Yeah. So I was like, that's not that crazy because like all my hits were usually when he's on base because his stats were ridiculous. Makes sense. That so makes sense. but. I mean, just also a, the fact that he scores on every ball in the gap for when I'm up first or like a deep single. I was like, I can get a lot of RBIs, man, with him up first. Yeah, right? I love it. Um, all right, let's talk about this year a little bit. What's something that you're looking forward to that you're working on? You know, obviously the national championship is great and we can live that, but at some point we've got to turn the page and we've got to get ready yeah. for business this year, right? So talk to us a little bit about what you're working on, what you're looking forward to. Yeah, so uh, I'm just looking to, you know, keep playing, grind, get my body in shape and, uh, I mean, our team looks good. Our pitchers look really good. And uh, we're, we're looking to do it again, man. Dude, I'm so excited. I know everybody here is. And uh, I know I speak on behalf of everybody here. We thank you for your time, dude. Thank you for what you did for LSU. As an alumni of LSU baseball, man, uh, I'm super proud to have you wearing the Tiger jersey. I'm excited to watch this year. I'm excited to watch your junior year unfold. And, and hopefully you do the same things following in some of these great guys' footsteps. So I uh, appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank looking you. forward to it, man. Thanks for the awesome. time. Appreciate it. <laughs> I like how he used your 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 actor name first, but oh yeah yeah well I'm I'm known to more people that way <laughs> yeah. Well, Dwyer, thank you so much. I appreciate the time sitting here on the purple couch with us uh, and also taking the time out of your, your, your life to come here and, and interact with the collectibles community, that kind of stuff. So hey, appreciate it's my, you. it's my pleasure. It's great to meet people who love the movie. I love it. Uh, so why don't you talk to us where you're from? Because we were chatting it up a little bit before we threw the mics on. I thought it was really interesting. So let us know where you're from and how that even interacts with like the Field of Dreams movie and all that stuff. Well, I, I was uh, I grew up on a farm in Ohio. Uh, so, you know, I'm this farm kid who's bailing hay every day and I had this dream to become an actor. So to me, it's it's kind of amazing that the, the movie that I'm known for required me to go back to a farm this time in Iowa and, uh, you know, and kind of make my mark in the in the entertainment world. So, yeah, it, it, it felt full circle to me. I love it. And was, so was this role we were kind of talking about this before, too. This was just another like, I guess, what is it uh, where you go pitch? I don't know. What, what's the lingo? Yeah, yeah, they just it was just another audition. Audition. Uh, they, that's the word um, I was looking for. <laughs> you know, the, when, when a movie comes into Hollywood, uh, they send out a breakdown of the different roles and then your agent submits you for it. And I guess I looked enough like Kevin to, to play his dad. And I went in with 300 other guys and, uh, you know, I ended up getting the part. And, uh, you know, I mean, it was just this small five minute part. Yeah. But, 
you know, I'd been acting for a while. I, I, I was up against uh, Tom Cruise for Risky Business, down to the last six people, and I was against uh, Brad Pitt for Thelma and Louise. And, you know, spoiler alert, I didn't get those. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is the one that, that people remember me for. And, you know, I, I, I acted for 40 years and did hundreds of plays and television shows, but I'm happy to be remembered for this little five minutes in, uh, yeah. in a cornfield. Well, it's pretty amazing. And you said that you didn't even think it was going to be this. I don't, I don't think you could ever really predict, right, the yeah. 35 year run that you guys have been on. But talk to me what you thought about the movie after it was made and everything. Well, you know, uh, I think the reason most of us did it was the script was just so beautiful. It's just a sweet story about, you know, dreams and all this stuff. But it really didn't have anything that recommended it as a great movie. There's no sex. There's no love story. There's no violence. You know, it's just this simple little story. So I think all of us were just doing it because it was a beautiful script, yeah. thinking that, you know, you know, this will get a little audience and maybe go to video or something. But, you know, the fact that we're still talking about it 35 years later is is just amazing and yeah. uh, you know a, a great tribute to the to the writers and uh, you know I had read the book Shoeless Joe that the movie's based on so I was excited to audition for it but yeah who knew yeah what do you think the success is attributed to is it that like we talked about obviously you have your book here and so many people have come up to you, you said throughout the years and told you how it impacted them differently do you think that's the feeling that that created that that magic uh, yeah, there's there's so many things. I mean, it, it, it just has such a positive message, you know, to follow your dreams. You get this crazy idea and so many people will tell you, hey, man, don't do that. You're going to you're going to hurt, get hurt, you know, and and, and to kind of support that, that he, he makes this dream come true and he gets to kind of not only meet Shoeless Joe Jackson, but but heal his relationship with his dad. And, you know, in just the father son thing, you know, there's so few places that fathers and sons can really have an emotional connection. And frequently it's around sports, you know, and 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 for them to have kind of created this moment where they have a catch and you know they finally kind of acknowledge the you know the difficulties they had growing up because it's always tough fathers and sons dads want you to be the best man you can be and yep. and you want your dad to just shut up that you know better than him <laughs> I mean I, exactly. I was a I was a pretty rough uh, you know kid when I was in a teenage years you know I really thought my dad didn't know anything you know and and you know 40 years later I think geez how did he get so smart you know so yeah anyway I love it. And, and it's funny that you say that because even, you know, I was a baseball guy myself. <clears throat> so my dad, we went baseball all our whole lives. And so I remember when I was young, he's like, we're going we're gonna to watch this movie together. And I was like, dad, no, you know, <laughs> all that, right? You roll your eyes. And so even that experience the first time, I was like, okay, there's a movie, but I'm not going to let my dad know I liked it, you know? But then as you get older, you appreciate so many things. And just the, the hindsight, the perspective, like you're saying, right? My career was successful enough to make it to the top level. And yeah. I shared that moment with my dad when I called him to say, hey, we're going. We did it. You know, yeah. so just the perspective that you have on the journey. I think that's what's so special about this movie is you can watch it now and it means something completely different to you than the first couple of times that you yeah, watched it. Yeah, same thing. I mean, a lot of people don't know, but my dad died unexpectedly 30 oh, days sorry. before he we went to go shoot that movie. So oh my you God, can imagine how strange that was to, you know, leave my dad's funeral and then play a dead father coming out of the corn to have a catch with their son. So wow. uh, obviously it has a lot of meaning in my life. And, and to me, what's kind of beautiful about that is so many fathers come up to me and, and tell me stories about their kids or their dads. And so I get to remember my dad. And I don't know, it, again, it just feels like this full circle thing that I've become this little traveling priest who gets to hear these confessions about people's dads and, and sons. So, uh, you know, I just really feel honored to be, have been put in that position. Wow. Um, I'm sorry about your loss, oh, but that's I, I got you, man. chills, man, because I like I know it sounds corny, but that's some fate stuff, you know, the way that things work out. And then, I mean, even just sharing this, you pulled this glove out. I thought it was a prop from the, the, the movie. But talk to me about what this is and especially how that means something to you now, what you just shared. with yeah, us. Yeah, this was my dad's glove that he taught my brother and I to play catch with when that's I was so a kid. Cool. I mean, that's pretty lame. I mean, this was, what? you know. But oh, that's a cool thing. I love yeah, it. I think yeah, that's and, so sick. And, and his dad had given him this glove. And uh, so you know, when my dad died, I dug this out of the closet and I thought, man, I'm going to get this in the movie, you know, because because it just is an homage to my dad. And yep. because I played a catcher, of course, the, the props department gave me a catcher's mitt. So right. this never made it into the movie, but I take it with me everywhere now and and let people try it on because it's as close as you'll get to my dad. You know, he's wow. he's been gone now for 35 years. And, and, and now, you know, you can kind of shake hands with him by putting your wow. hand in the mitt. So I anyway, yeah. no, I, I own a collectible shop. So something like this is absolutely amazing. And that's what I love about collectibles, right? The value of them is all about the story behind them, the meaning, the sentiment, all that stuff. So thank you for sharing that with us. I mean, it's it's that's really cool. Just from a nerd that loves collectibles. And <laughs> yeah, stuff yeah. Too. And, you know, this Bayou uh, 
this show is just fantastic for all that stuff. You get to, you get, you know, you get to hear the story behind all these yeah. things, you know, and that, that's what's kind of amazing. So yeah. I was just privileged to be asked to come and, yeah. and, you know, and, you know, I enjoyed like everybody watching LSU this year, you know, I, I, I'm not even a, a, a particular fan or anything, but those guys were just so much fun to watch. And, you know, just overcame so much that it was just, you know, it's just one of those great sports stories. It really was. It was a great year. It was fun. It was fun to be a part of it and be an alumni and everything, yeah. obviously, too. Good bragging rights. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. um, before I let you go, because you've been here a long time and we thank you for your time. Uh, any cool stories that you could share with us? Anything working with Kevin Costner, anything gosh. along those lines? Oh, gosh, there are so many. Uh, <laughs> we need a whole nother podcast for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Kevin was in an interesting place in his career. Right. Uh, Bull Durham came out while we were shooting uh, Field of Dreams, you know. Wow. So so That's suddenly, cool. you know, we were going out after after shooting and right. at bars and stuff and everything was fine. But once Bull Durham came out, within a couple of weeks, we couldn't go anywhere without yeah. him just being swarmed by women everywhere in Iowa, you know, kind of <laughs> wanting to get to know him. So uh, and, and strangely, while between takes, he was going out to his Winnebago trailer and writing Dances with Wolves, which was the next big movie. So it, cool. it, it fits in this amazing place in his career because he, you know, kind of went from a, you know, an up and coming actor to kind of a, you know, full fledged movie star kind of in the course of the of the year that we were shooting the movie. I love it. I love it. Um, I'll, I'll, I promise I'll let you get out of here in a minute. But what was it like working with some of the big name people that were on that set, you know, in that movie and stuff like that? And how did that shape the rest of your career? Well, yeah, it's just an amazing cast. You know, I mean, uh, Burt Lancaster. I mean, when I was a kid, I, I used to do a bad imitation of Burt Lancaster. He was just such a movie star. And, yeah. and then, you know, uh, I mean, James Earl. I mean, Kevin was yeah, amazing. Right, right. He was so nice. But James Earl, you know, like, how do you introduce yourself to Darth Vader? You're you know, right, like, like, you know, I'm trying to think like, uh, uh, what do I and, say? <laughs> you know, I first ended up kind of stuck next to him in the makeup trailer. And I was like trying not to make eye contact because I was like, <laughs> what do I say? What do I say? And he just said, hi, I'm Jimmy and shook my hands. Jimmy. And, you know, yeah. And I he was. It. He was just a great guy. He'd grown up on a farm too, so we had a lot to talk about, and so it was just kind of amazing. Even you know Ray Liotta, you know, uh, just the list a is great, crazy. amazing yeah. it's actors, unbelievable. and yeah, we it was just a great cast. We had so much fun, you know, going out to the bars afterwards, and you know, it was it was a great. It was <laughs> and a great how, how old were you during the movie? I was twenty nine back then. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's I was legal. Time. You're legal. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, Dwyer, thank you so much, man. Uh, I know you got some more autographs to sign and some stuff to do, but thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us in the Collectibles community. This was a great event. Trey's done a great job. So yeah. uh, thank you for your time. Oh, Appreciate pleasure, you. Yeah. Love the intros. They don't get old. I love it. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, we're here on the Purple Couch. I'm with a special artist right now and a Northeast brother. I love it. Jordan Spector, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you. <laughs> for sure. Thank you for having me on today. It's great to be down here, and I'm always down for a trip to the bayou. Let's go. You're a Northeast guy. Tell us where you're from and, and, and why, you, why you ended up down here, or how you ended up down here, I should say. It, it's always a fun story to tell, and I always love where my art takes me. Yeah. Um, but, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm from Philadelphia, so I'm a Philly sports fan. Philly sports fan, yeah. go birds. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I, I always love the story behind a, a certain athlete's uh, journey. And that started with Burrow back in 2020 and his, what led to his championship run and, and just everything behind that inspired me to make this, this piece uh, behind you there, uh, Smoking Joe. And, um, so good. you know, that, that was one of the first pieces I did as well. That was like different than a lot of the Philly art I was doing. And again, it was something that like I, I make the best art when I'm passionate about it. Yep. And that, that's what happened for that piece. And uh, it was a huge hit and it actually led to me doing like a whole media tour down here. Really, I was on Matt Moscona's show. I was on a bunch of different other radio stations and I just made all these amazing relationships from, from day one for meeting these people. And uh, it's, it's lasted ever since. And I've been commissioned to do a ton of other LSU Saints artwork. So, uh, you know, I, I keep coming back. I can't I get enough it. of it. So I love it. Yeah, well, I moved down here. I've been here down here for 17 years now, so I get it. I get it. Um, <laughs> it's it's a special place. The sports culture is absolutely amazing. It really is. People care so much about their sports. They care about their players, all that kind of stuff, especially when they get to the next level, too. That's the fun part. So yeah. Um, what, what kind of stuff have you been working on lately? Are you doing any follow-up stuff? Have you worked with Joe? Is that, has that, have you gotten a personal relationship at all? So with the cool thing about that is when I did it, there was so much excitement around it and so much exposure. I actually ended up uh, collaborating with the uh, photographer originally took the picture of that. Jeff and, Marks, right? 
Yeah, Je- yeah, Jeffrey Marks. Been, he and, came on our podcast too. Yeah, yep, that's cool. Yep. Yeah. And uh and also with uh the Burrow family. So I, I have a, a solid relationship with Joe's dad and actually his brothers all have a copy of that. Like that's everybody awesome. in the family has one. Yeah. Uh unfortunately I've never actually spoken to Joe, but <laughs> one day I'd like to do that. Yeah, yeah. But um but it's cool to have that relationship and, and we every every quarter we donate a portion of all the sales continually back to his uh Burrow fund in Ohio. Um, I love it. Yeah, so that's it, really it, cool. It's cool to still have that going, and um, I actually am working on a new borough project. But this is actually with Fanatics. I I, I work with Fanatics. I do projects for them. Nice. So this will be like an official license piece with with Fanatics coming soon uh, on the Bengals. Borough on the Bengals. So, love it. That's uh, really cool. Yeah. So that that's something I'm working on. Um, I'm actually working on my first ever trading card, which is pretty cool related to yeah, your business. Let's go. And I was actually talking to, talking to your guy earlier about um, uh, showing him what we're doing. Yeah. I, I'm working with uh, Brian Dawkins, a former Philadelphia Eagle nice. legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I collaborated with him on my first ever trading card that I'm dropping next month. That's so, very cool. Does he have a business in, in collectibles at all or something? Or Dawkins? Yeah. No, he, uh, but he's really into like Marvel, like Weapon X, yeah. like his character. Yeah. And uh, I, I've had a great relationship with him for years now. So yeah, very cool. I was like, who can I work with to do my first ever trading card? And, and he was, he was the guy. I love so it. Uh, yeah, it, I'm excited about both, both projects. Very cool. Uh, I definitely want to dive into the business of art because I think there's so many emerging artists, right? And people don't know how to capitalize on it. There's been a lot of tradition of, you know, artists struggling and things like that. But with Web3 and development, I'm excited to dive into it. But before we get there, I, I kind of want to backtrack, you know, with some, with an iconic piece and things going, you know, viral, people might assume that this is something that you picked up recently. Talk to me a little bit about when art started for you and how it's, you know, your journey has unfolded. Yeah. So the, the, my craft, my actual skill has been a lifelong journey and I've been drawing ever since I was a kid, ever since I could pick up a, a pencil as cliche as that Love sounds, yeah. but uh, art definitely runs in the family. My dad is a talented artist. I always say he's more creative than I am. He can, oh, that's he can cool. sculpt. He can, he's a good photographer. He can paint, he can draw. So I learned everything from him. I'm, I'm self-taught. I never went to art school. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing that my entire life. And I actually played football at Temple University in Philadelphia. I was Very a cool. walk-on. Nice. So it's cool to meet Rudy, yeah. Rudy earlier. Shout yeah. out to Rudy. Let's go. That's and cool. yeah. um, that, that's really what actually led me back to art is because I got hurt playing ball. That, that really sucked after all the work I put in. But uh, it was a silver lining because it actually led back to me getting into art again. And um, from that day forward, I never looked back. This is like 2015. Wow. So I started doing my art again. And before you knew it, I was doing work for players that I played with, guys who are now in the league, uh, like Hassan Redick, Robbie Anderson, nice. Tyler Medikevich, other guys too that I did work for. And they they were kind of my first foot in the door. And I just, I like I said, I never looked back from that point yeah. on. It, it, was, it was a very amazing feeling to know that people were willing to pay for my work and my craft, something I love to do. Yeah. Um, that, that's how I got to where I'm at today. I love that. Yeah. Now, in, in our shop, we have a ton of art. It kind of plays like a little bit of an art studio gallery type thing. So I have a lot of artists that come in and look for wall space. You know, they want to sell their paintings. They don't know where to start. They don't know the prices and stuff, right? You obviously said your career started with athletes being willing to buy and, and that kind of stuff. Talk to me what that journey's like from going from commission paintings, working with athletes. I'm sure there were some times that you gave stuff away, right? Just to get your name out there. But then once you get that attention and people start buying it, how do you turn it into a business and make it sustainable? So I, I learned very, very quickly uh, when I was getting into art and, and trying to learn how to make a living off of it, that it's not oh, it's not about just the commission stuff. It's about the, the print game, too. And not everybody wants to pay for an original painting. So right. for me, it was like, how can I appeal to both markets, people who want an original uh, a one of a kind piece and also people who just want to hang a, a print in their in their room. Right. So um, that was important to me to, to appeal to both markets. And it's, it's been a, a years of of trial and error, finding the, the best quality product for the best price and also how to market that how to build a website, how to build social media. So when you can tie it all together and go through that process and try to enjoy that process too of how you can get there, uh, then it goes a long way. So not cool. only the original work, but being able to, again, sell prints of your work and putting yourself out there, like doing events like I am today, like I still do events like this. Yeah. I've been doing this for five, six years now, doing Love doing it. outdoor events, indoor events. And I, I tend to I tend to say yes to a lot of opportunities, you know, That's just because just because I love it, you yeah. know, it, it's a part of the journey, and you never know who you're gonna meet, which is something I learned. 
Um, and like I said, it just goes a long way to do those little things, the shows, not just online. Um, and that's, that's really how I started it, but I still do it today. I love it. No, and you're absolutely right, right? We have a small business, we have a shop and we come to these places it's all about community and the people that you're trying to appeal to, right? Collectors all have a similar mindset and they're looking for similar things. So I think it's really cool that you're networking, you're out here, you're doing that stuff. Um, I think it bodes well for your career too. I think that's really cool. For sure. Um, do you have a studio up in, up in Philadelphia? Uh, just a private space that I work out of. Very cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm indifferent on like, if I want to have an actual yeah, yeah, storefront yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. um, Oh, it creates a lot of pressure. That's like, you gotta be there. Yeah, be on. Like, you I, I, I just love doing our events. So we do like, we do a lot of big shows in Philly and then a lot of online business too. Um, uh, but cool. eventually I, I may go that route and have an actual yeah. storefront. Very cool. So I always like to ask artists this and creatives, what would be the dream project The dream something? I don't know. It might not even be a canvas piece. It might be a mural. I don't know. Right. What, what would be the dream for thing for me you? being, being as big of a birds fan as yeah. I am, it would be like doing a mural in the Eagle stadium. Yeah. Um, but like, I, I feel super grateful when I can have these kind of re reflection questions, but I, I've already had multiple dream projects come, uh, manifest into, into what, you know, I thought that it could be something that would never happen, but it, it has happened. So, um, it's been cool to do that. Even like this trading card I was talking about, like yeah. that has been like a dream project for yeah, me. So to cool. actually see it happening is In really real cool. But very cool. Well, this is uh, this has been a great event. It really has. Your art is absolutely incredible. You were right next to us, so it was really cool to get to see you see some of the work. I think uh, I heard some rumors that Drew Brees, who was was there a buyer of that? Did he? Uh, the Breeze one? Yeah, did he? Well, well he, he has the original of that. That's, yeah, that's. Yes. I was trying to get that out of you. I think that's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Like, Drew Brees bought one of your paintings of his. So I think that, I mean, the validation there is pretty amazing, I, I'm sure. For sure. That, yeah. that was cool. And he, he was such a great guy. Um, How'd you guys get in touch? Did he reach out to you? So it actually comes all back to Trey. I love uh, it. Trey. Uh, Trey, making things happen wherever you are. <laughs> yeah, so, so Trey was able to um, allow me to be able to get uh, print signed of that piece nice. uh, for an opportunity he had out in San Diego. So I flew out there, had X amount of prints that I want to get signed, and then I, I linked up with Bur uh, with Breeze and gave him that. So dude, that's, that's so cool. awesome, very cool. Um, where can everybody find you if they're interested in either buying a print, buying an original? Where are they reaching out? You have a website, social media. So yeah, my website is SpectreSportsArt.com. Very cool. Um, and my Instagram is at Specter underscore Art. Same thing on Twitter, and then on Facebook is Jordan Specter Art. Very cool. So. We're going to put everything in our show notes on our YouTube page and everything. We'll link it all. Uh, but, Jordan, thank you so much, man. I appreciate this. Appreciate this was really cool. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Good luck the rest of your career. Thank you, man. You too. Thank you. And I got to come to the shop sometime. Yes, please do. Check please it out. do.